In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate 95% confidence intervals for a Spearman correlation. And the example is based on the socioeconomic status and reading ability data, which are scored on an ordinal scale. And so this procedure that I'm going to show you requires you to first estimate the Spearman correlation. So in this case here, go into Analyze, Correlate by Variate, and put the two variables into the Variables box, and make sure you have the Spearman option selected. You can deselect Pearson and click OK. And here's the 0.398 correlation. This is the point estimate. And we want the 95% confidence intervals. And to obtain those, what you need is the syntax file that I provided a link in the textbook chapter for. And I'll also try to remember to put a link in the description of the video so that you can just get it there if that's where you're watching this from. And the thing I'll note about this syntax is that I'm using a value of 1.96 as the multiplier and that's what makes it 95% confidence intervals. If you're familiar with the Z distribution, you can estimate different levels of confidence by specifying a different Z value here. I'll probably cover that in a separate video at some point. But for this one here, it's 95% confidence intervals. And this procedure is based on Bonnet and Wright 2000 sample size requirements for estimating Pearson, Kendall, and Spearman correlations. They provided information that can be used to estimate Spearman correlation confidence intervals. And so this is where the reference is from for this procedure. So in order to execute the procedure, you're going to need a new data file. So click on File, New, and Data. And you need to input two pieces of information. If you look at the syntax, what you need is something called RS. That's going to be the variable Spearman R correlation and you also need the sample size n. So all these formulae assume that that information is in the working data file. And so I need to create those two variables, rs and n. And I'm going to input that information right here. So the correlation that I want to put in here is 0.398 and the sample size is 36. So 0 0.398, 0 0.398 and 36. And I'm going to close the other data file with the raw variables because I don't want to confuse SPSS into thinking what data file it should use. So once I've got those two pieces of information into the SPSS data file, I can now execute this syntax file, run all, and here we get the lower bound 95% confidence interval, which is equal to 0.07 and the upper bound, which is equal to 0.65. So the point estimate of 0.398 is associated with lower and upper bounds of 0.07 and 0.65, which is consistent with the observation of a statistically significant correlation. Because this p-value is less than 0.05, we expect to see the confidence intervals to both be on the same side of 0. And in this case, they're positive, And the point estimate is positive, And therefore, it's statistically significant. Now, I have done some testing with this series of commands to make sure that it works. And by that, I mean I've estimated Spearman correlations that are just barely close to 0 0.05. And whether I'm a bit above or a bit below, it produces the confidence intervals that I would expect in the sense that if it's not significant result, one of the point estimates ends up being negative and or positive. So you end up, when there's a significant result, you should see lower bound and upper, upper bound confidence intervals both on the same side of zero in relation to the point estimate. So this is a positive point estimate, and I got positive confidence intervals. If this was a negative correlation, and it was statistically significant, the confidence intervals would both be negative as well. So that is one way to calculate fairly accurate confidence intervals for the Spearman correlation. 